packed house post lunch. This is crazy. Yeah, you guys sure you're in the right room? <laughs> yeah, this isn't Internet of Dongs yet. That's next. <laughs> All right, so uh, pretty much uh, you guys want to make sure that you put on your ski masks and your uh, balaclavas uh, because we're going to teach you how to be cyber criminals. Uh, so a little bit about us, uh, a very little bit about us. Uh, Johnny is a guy. He does some things. Uh, I'm also a guy, and I also do other things. I've been doing things for about 40 years uh, <laughs> in and outside of the InfoSec industry, and uh, Ben is coming up on that. He's a little better at doing things, but... Uh, well, other things. Other things. So it's we got a good spread of uh, experience here. <laughs> <laughs> So when we say uh, dark web, like what is that, right? So the media uses all of these terms interchange interchangeably. Um, you know, dark web, dark net, deep web, deep net, deep deep, dark dark, the dark like, dark, deep dark, <laughs> dark dark, derp derp derp. <laughs> they took our derbs. Okay. Um, so this is actually I found this graphic and it, it is the best visual explanation I have ever seen for this. So uh, essentially, what we're looking at is uh, the, the dark web, when we say dark web, um, that is what's sitting on a dark net. A dark net is an overlay network, typically, that sits on top of the regular internet. Um, and uh, that would be something like Tor or I2P, um, or uh, there's there's a couple other ones. There's one in Japan now, Seppuku net. Um, net. Yes, I, I can barely say so it. So basically, just, just the same way that the World Wide Web sits yeah. on top of the internet, the internet being... Things besides web servers, being your mail servers, your routers, etc., uh, and then you've got the World Wide Web inside of that. There's a dark net of infrastructure, and then a dark web that's web servers inside that infrastructure. But they all still sit on top of the internet infrastructure because everything does. Yeah, and uh, the media likes to portray it as like this uh, secret network, like that is parallel to or next to the internet. It's like now nah, it's it's on top of it. Still really uses the same infrastructure. It has yeah. to. There's Unless somebody's running their own fiber under the ocean. Well, I mean, is it, that you? I mean, anybody? I can see mesh nets doing that no? in the future, okay. but not yet. They wouldn't be this big. No. Oh, oh. Um, so uh, we're going get to right into it. first yeah. talk about yeah, uh, money laundering. That'll be fun. The first thing you need to do when doing anything on the dark web. Yeah. No, really. I mean, don't because yeah. <laughs> then you'll get caught by. The oh yeah. Pro world. tip. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't do anything on the dark web. Um, so Eastern Europe, like they love to still use things like perfect money, um, web money, uh, okay pay, pays, uh, stuff like that. Um, but increasingly, uh, the currency of the uh, transactions and underground economies on the dark web is uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, Bitcoin is huge, of course. <clears throat> Monero is just blowing up. Um, and uh, there's a lot of hype over Zcash because of their uh, zero proof um, protocols that they have in place for uh, anonymity. Yeah, anonymity. It has words like zero proof, Z like you know. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we promise you're anonymous. Um, but those aren't the only ways that you could pay for stuff. Uh, of course, you can use like some people will take like gift cards or uh, nobody will take direct PayPal transactions. Um, and there's a, oh, well, unless it's a hack PayPal account. So right. That's, that's yeah. Um, Don't use your PayPal. Use an account that you have permission to use. Or. Also, there's a couple other choices. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are a I mean, lot of cryptocurrencies. Like, there's even Kanye coin, which is pretty amazing. Which he was very upset about. Yeah, he was angry. He was angry there was a Kanye coin. His face was on a coin. Why is he angry? He loves himself. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Roos, Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> not angry. Um, but uh, oh, Hampton would be though, because the whole Fed thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this we're in Canada. Nobody gets oh right forefather right. jokes. <laughs> American forefather <laughs> yeah. jokes. Uh, so uh, if you're going to be using these cryptocurrencies, uh, you're also going to want to put some obfuscation into uh, what you're doing with them because, well, the uh, ledger is very, very public and anybody can see whatever transactions you're making. Uh, and so what you want to do is mix your transactions with a whole bunch of other people's to make it really, really difficult to trace. Uh, but somebody later today is going to do a Bitcoin tracing talk. And I'm yeah. really excited about that. 
so essentially the way a tumbling service works uh, or a mixing service is you take your Bitcoins and you put it into the tumbling service. Um, they have some Bitcoins in reserve. Uh, and then uh, some other people's uh, coins that are also using the tumbling service are there. They're all mixed up. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, series of wallets created. Uh, and the coins are shunted into those wallets. And then you get at your new wallet your Bitcoins that were tumbled minus the transaction fee or so the service fee. Basically, it's like a, they, they take a bunch of coins and put them in a bunch of different piggy banks, shake each piggy, piggy bank up, and then put all the piggy banks in a bag and shake that up. <laughs> And then pull one out and then pull some Bitcoins out of that piggy bank and hand them back to you. And so nobody can really figure out where those Bitcoins you have came from now. It's just crazy complex. Unless you're a statistician, then you can probably figure it out. Uh, so the next topic. Uh, everybody has Lux Eterna playing in their head from Requiem for a Dream, right? Drugs. So when you're going to buy drugs on the darknet... Uh, uh, or on a dark net or the dark web, um, you can go to each one of the individual over 30 markets and search for what you want. But don't. Yeah. Um, also, uh, American feds, great job on taking down Silk Road. That definitely fixed the problem. Yeah. I don't know where to buy drugs uh, aside from these 30 places. But other than that, I'm out of luck. So um, in terms of like volume and traffic and um, uh, transactions, uh, Alpha Bay Market, Outlaw Market, which is the oldest, um, uh, Handsome Market, and uh, Dream Market are going to be the top four. Um, DHL, uh, Dark Heroes League? I, I don't know. It sounds like it's not the DHL League. you think it is. Yeah. Uh, and they Alpha will ship you things <laughs> <laughs> all day. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I guess the people that run Apple Market are just like really not afraid of getting a cease and desist from that fruit company in California, but also the real deal market. A little apple there. Oh, if you want zero days uh, or dumps from uh, like massive attacks um, or uh, uh, from hospitals, uh, the real deal market, that's where you get it. And uh, we'll have all these slides up yeah. for you guys. So. so instead of going to each one of those, there's a lot of tech. You could just go to Graham's search engine, which is great because it takes a bunch of the top markets uh, and it searches all of them for you without you having to create accounts in each one and go in and look for what you're looking for. Uh, so it's sort of like a dog pile for drugs. So, That's a good sentence. Yeah. Dog pile for drugs. <laughs> I'd go to that party. Yeah. And um, so like what you have here is just uh, searching for sour, di sour diesel, some popular marijuana in the States, medical marijuana. Uh, and what, I, what is really surprising, and I'll read this to you because I know it's a lot of text. What I like is the description Blah, blah, blah. Uh, this fast-acting strain delivers energizing, dreamy cerebral effects that have pushed sour diesel to its legendary status. Stress, pain, and depression fade away in long-lasting relief that makes sour diesel a top choice among me amongst medical patients. Like, that is a legitimate marketing statement. <laughs> this isn't like, yo, dog, I got your hookup. What you need, what you need. <laughs> this is, like, legitimate. This makes, I want this. I don't even have half those problems, and I'm like, that sounds amazing. So, like, the, and it's because all these market marketplaces and all the people who sell the marketplaces are all competing, and so not only do you have legitimate, lengthy descriptions of everything, um, you've got uh, ratings, seller ratings, and rankings. You've yeah, got complaint that's department. Why the vendor name is a link because you can actually click on that and see what their past ratings from other customers are. Yeah, and we'll we'll get more into that later. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, the location is important for a lot of people because they don't want to be dealing with um, international customs. Turn his mic up. Location. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So location is really important to a lot of people that are buying because they don't want to have to deal with uh, international customs. So if they're shipping within the country, uh, there's uh, usually less chance of it getting seized. Also, I like to use grams because it makes me think of grandma. It's like, let me ask grandma for some pot. <laughs> 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 all right so what other drugs can you get on these markets um so you get your staples uh you know that your neighborhood plug would have in their inventory typically um weed molly hash blow acid special k uh crack ice opiate pain meds unfortunately uh and uh research chemicals oh my god don't do those we have no idea what they do to you <laughs> um and so like 
I, I really like some of the some of the marketing they do. Like for the acid, uh, the the uh, strips that they have are like amazing. They have um, ones that have Trump doing his wrong face. Uh, they have like, of course, SpongeBob. They have uh, all kinds of amazing ones. It's it's a weird, wacky place. <laughs> Everybody there has a bizarre sense of humor, and they're selling the most illegal stuff on earth. <laughs> Um, so there are some uh, other things that you can definitely get there that aren't going to be in the typical inventory of like a, a street dealer. Um, it, uh, things like, um, you know, lab equipment for producing drugs, precursors, um, things like that. Uh, uh, military enhancement drugs. Sure. Um, uh, Non-mainstream medicinal herbs for all your... Uh, Non-mainstream medicinal needs. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I didn't want to say the words homeopathic and medicinal in the same sentence. So. That's valid. <laughs> Non-mainstream um, medicinal. That's a good PC term for homeopathic. Also, uh, devil's breath is really interesting. Uh, so this powder is used in um, South and Central America uh, to rob and kidnap people, typically. Um, I mean, you can take it. So everybody drug, knows. But... This one here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah that's terrifying yeah it's basically it's rupees the yeah. type of but really know. really strong yeah uh like fentanyl is to other opiates Sco right Scopolamine devil's breast you wake up in singapore yeah yeah hopefully you wake up yeah you're on your like third owner and not in an ice bath yeah yeah um oh also you could just buy like real poison Something oh yeah like ricin breaking bad ricin untraceable poison yeah, here you go. Um, I, I like the uh, the reviews they have here. Like when you when, like somebody posts like a complaint or a notice, like prosecutor says the rice vendor is convicted of theft and distribution, possibly extortion, which in normal cases would would make you be like, oh, I don't want to deal with this person. But here it's that's like, oh, they're legit. <laughs> this is the guy I want. Yeah, it's real rice and cool. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> like he delivered. Yeah, he he delivered, man. He, got busted for it on the uh, possibly extortion uh, charge um, what that is is uh, this vendor was threatening to dox or out um, some people that were buying other things from him um, if they didn't uh, pay up so he was blackmailing them essentially uh, extorting them um, and so uh, that's actually something that happens a lot on uh, these markets is uh, when a vendor wants something from somebody or wants to not give up a product or wants extra money, uh, then they already have the shipping information um, and the name that it's being shipped to, and they can extort uh, their buyers <clears throat> using that. Um, they also keep it as a playbook a lot of times. Uh, like if they get popped by the police, they'll say, hey, if you reduce my sentence, I'll give you the names of all these people uh, and their addresses that bought from me so you can go investigate them. So, so don't buy stuff. Don't buy stuff on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, in that same vein, uh, what's horrible about buying these drugs and uh, physical items is that you're providing a physical location for the stuff to be shipped to. So you have to worry about the doxing, but also, uh, you know, a controlled um, uh, delivery by uh, the feds or somebody else who knows that this is going down and wants to take it from you. Um, and when somebody says, I have 100% stealth shipping, uh, that's complete horseshit. Yeah. There's no such thing as 100%. That's the same as trust me, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or um, hold my beer. I did like that this, this made the news because, like, we've been shipping marijuana since, like, the 60s. <laughs> but the news is, like, all up in arms about, like, a couple of pounds of it. Like, five, six pounds. Um, but Darknet. But, but because it was like the dark web, the deep dark, oh man, we uncovered this deep dark web scam where they ship marijuana. Me too. <laughs> um, but the old, the the old Mitch Hedberg joke. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really like the FedEx man because he's a really good pot dealer and doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> or in this case, the United States Postal Service. Yeah. Um, which actually, uh, a lot of people say, definitely use USPS, don't go with uh, FedEx or DHL or anything like that, uh, because you have a much greater chance of USPS actually delivering it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, that being said, recently, like within the past few days, there's been um, a huge series of global busts. Um, and one of the things that they were doing in the U.S. is um, ICE uh, was going to, uh, what is that? Immigration Customs Enforcement, Enforcement. Yeah. Um, in the U.S. Uh, were actually going to different major mail hubs and just opening mail uh, that they suspected might have drugs in it. And then yeah, they used that. Just in with knives. Yeah. Just- uh, no, no, oh well. Which, from a privacy standpoint, is terrifying. Yeah. But, yeah. Government. They're protecting us. Right. With knives. But ch- think, think of the children. Guns. Uh, so, there have been, there's been a lot of media hype about uh, buying guns on the dark web. Uh, and, oh my god, terrorists and school shootings and this is what's going on. Um, so, yeah, you can definitely buy guns. Uh, there, there are places to get them. Uh, they're not stupid expensive, um, but there's a lot of scamming. You can also buy guns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fake guns. guns. Yeah, and yeah. It, a lot of fake guns. A lot of counterfeit. Mm-hmm. A lot of just doesn't work. Yeah, this is a cheap replica. It's gonna blow up in your hand. So have yeah. fun. You're gonna buy a deadly firearm that is essentially a zip gun. <laughs> yeah, it's like somebody <laughs> built it. Zip gun. <laughs> Um, yeah. but not but only it's a Glock. Is, yeah, yeah. There's not only a lot of scamming, uh, but uh, there's also a lot of sting operations going on right now, uh, where law enforcement from different countries uh, will pose as a seller to try and get people to try and buy these guns and then pop them. Yeah, I think that's a, a big thing that nobody gets is like as easy as it is for for Ben and I to get on the dark web and buy guns and sell guns. It's just as easy for law enforcement to do the same. Like, there's nothing stopping law enforcement from hanging out here and doing sting operations. Like, mm-hmm. they're there. They're everywhere. The dark web, you know, it's like when you think, like, oh, IRC is the place to have secret communications because the feds forgot it existed. No. They're also here. Some of these sellers are federal agents or whatever they call them up here. RCMP. Not Mounties. sure who deals with that. Mount, the Mounties. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the deep dark. Selling your Glocks. I wonder if they're like on a horse while they're using the computer. I imagine so. Are they required? Are they allowed to dismount at any point during their... <laughs> they're on duty. They're on that horse. On the computer. Um, and there there have actually been a lot of recent arrests. Um, and, uh, you know, people swooping in and buying both or buying um uh, catching both buyers and sellers um of these weapons um and really uh considering how easy it is to get weapons like physically um in a lot of places around the world uh especially america um it's just not worth it for a lot of vendors to try and sell through the complication that is the dark web and dealing with um you know shipping and all of that uh, when um, there's a lot of legal channels for gun ownership that would take a buyer less time than dealing with this as well. Yeah, the risk is extremely high if you're buying or selling guns on the dark web. This is one of like the most monitored markets of the dark web is weapon dealing. Yeah, because of the war on terror. Like, yeah. This is a huge focus. We're winning, though. But, We're winning okay. the war on terror. Just so, like we won the war on drugs and the war on poverty? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now they're, they're stuck in the deep dark. <laughs> like, we got them here. They're, they're cornered. We almost beat them. <laughs> Uh, I mean, notice that, you know, allegedly, remember the, the big Paris attacks there, they were claiming all the weapons were bought on the deep dark, which still has been proven, but right. They're, they're eyeing it pretty hard. Moving on. Let's so go. naturally from weapons, we'll go to, uh, how the media I tells so you how you can buy hitmen. I love this. this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hitmen, um, <laughs> Here's how you buy hitmen. I'm going to tell you. Write this down. Everybody got a pen out? I'm going to tell you top to bottom how you hire a hitman on the dark web. Did it just... You don't. (laughs) Period. The end. Every, every single hitman on the dark web is an agent. Is a federal agent of some form, law enforcement, or a scammer. There are no hitmen out there. Nobody is going to risk everything to off your stupid ex-girlfriend who met her new boyfriend on Facebook and you're mad. Like, no. 
no, you don't have enough money for them to want to deal with this garbage. There are not pit men on the dark web. Don't try. Don't bother. I mean, the most famous case was uh, Dread Pirate Roberts from the Silk Road uh, tried to hire a hitman through the dark web uh, to take care of his problem. <clears throat> hey, guess what? He was a fed. Of all people, he should have known. The dude right? who ran Silk Road thought real hitmen were on the dark web. And he did that. So, yeah, I mean, if you do want to hire a hitman, um, no, please do this. Yeah. <laughs> please, so then you're in jail and everything's fine. Go buy your hitman on the dark web. It's great. Yeah, I mean, typically... 100% guaranteed stealth delivery. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be terrifying. <laughs> Get this box and just... Uh... <laughs> it just pops out. <laughs> it's a piano wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, as, as he was saying earlier... Hang on, um, I'm going to set up an account for... <laughs> like, actual hitmen are going to be dealing with organized crime because they know what to expect. There's a working relationship there. There's a lot less risk to them uh, in terms of the person they're dealing with in the transaction uh, because they're not dealing with a 14-year-old kid who was angry at Xbox Live. Yeah, they're employed. Real hitmen are already employed. They have an employer. You know, organized crime, then they're somewhere in that tree. They're not hanging out on Craigslist. <laughs> Being like, man, I hope somebody needs someone killed. I gotta pay this rent. <laughs> it's not that's not what's going on. Moving on. Hackers. Ed Hackers. Uh, cyber bullies, online harassers. Yeah, you can't buy physical hitmen, but you can buy uh, essentially digital hitmen. Like this guy. Norf. Norf. <laughs> is North here? North, throw a hand up. <laughs> yeah. No, okay, All right, cool. Shout well, he's out the guy in the hoodie. There's his yeah. picture. Yeah, anyway, who's in a hoodie? I bet we can. <laughs> that guy. There he is. Hey, North. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, giving an idea. Oh, this guy uses Sigaint too. Uh, mm. um, I don't know if they could read this. I'll read it to you. Hello, I am North, and have been programming <laughs> and hacking, both, <laughs> for about seven years. I am very active in the hacking community, yet none of us know him, and would love to help or partner with you. Help or partner, choice is yours. <laughs> I offer many different services for extremely low prices. If you want to contact me, email me at north at stigaint.org. A lot of hackers and dark web people in general, fishers, is scammers, yeah, uh, extortionists. Uh, extortionists. extortionists. Love SIGAINT. Yeah. Yep. Don't know why? They're all over the SIGAINT. If you see SIGAINT like on a website or an email, just mm -hmm. run, get out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and here's like, what's a third of a uh, Bitcoin now? 100 bucks? 200 bucks? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these guys' prices are like ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, like 0.2 to 0.6, depending on the database size. Like, database hacking means he gets in and just gives you the dump. How does he know the database size before you actually, I guess you, you, you pay you tell after. Him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you pay after. Um, website hacking. Great. Look, I think it's other. Great change. Yes. DDoS. Yes. Doxing. Yes. Like, you want your grades changed? Yes, I can do it. Oh, all right. Okay. Does anybody not know what doxing is? We talk about that. Okay. Cool. It's essentially building a dossier on someone that has all their personal information. Like their physical addresses, their mother's maiden name, their social security number, all that stuff. So uh, the root word is like documents, docs. Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. getting everyone's documents. Yeah. We get um, into that later. I mean, so naturally, you know, after the doxing, when you go to the next level, uh, you get to the new SAS, swatting as a service. <laughs> yeah. And like, and it, like, a lot of these have amazing reviews. Yeah. Like, like, great seller, delivered as promised, excellent experience. <laughs> like, yeah, this seller, I don't know if you could see it, uh, his rating is a 5 out of 5, which um, for Nucleus Market was, like, unheard of at the time. Yeah, 5 out of 5 as some dude who calls in bomb threats and gets your, your, your guy, the guy on Xbox Live who beat you swatted for uh, not much money. I mean, and in the U.S., if you live in an area where the police have been really heavily militarized, which is... A lot of areas. Yeah, the ones where they um, spent all their money on military not equipment training. versus training. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really a terrifying proposition to have these guys busting into your house at like 3 a.m. and your dog is barking, so your dog gets shot and they're throwing flashbangs. Yeah, in your just, baby's crib. That yeah, was a yeah, thing. Yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Ugh. 
how like tons of people have been like blinded, maimed, and murdered by SWAT teams who had no training with all the equipment that they were using because the military sold them a bunch of M4s for like 20 bucks a piece. Well, and uh, I mean, the SWAT team on, on their side, they think they're actually going into a live hostile situation. So they're going to be like on edge. Yeah, they're terrified. Yeah. And so like they bust in and, the, and your dog's barking at them as a dog would, shot in the face. Now your dog's dead because you beat some kid on Xbox Live. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's horrible. They, you know, they, they elbow your window to your baby's room and throw a flashbang grenade in there without checking who's in the room, including for babies. Oh, that's good. And that's, I mean, you can Google this information. This was terrible things that have happened in the U.S. Uh, and it's because, like I said, these police organizations are buying discount military gear from the government. Cheers, Patrick. Cheers, Cheers Patrick. Cheers, Hackbus Canada. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, that's the Chick Chuck. That's Chick Chuck. Chick Chuck. All right. Oh, cool. I thought it was like a cola. Yeah. No, this is way better. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, that's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Chick Chuck. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> um, now the talk is good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those were like some of the like basic sort of hacking digital, you know, near do well stuff. Um, oh, swatting is real. Hitmen, not swatting, definitely yeah, real. Yeah. Also, a uh, step up from the basic hacking services, uh, there are more sophisticated digital offerings uh, for cybercrime shenanigans. Uh, things like remote access trojans uh, are really cheap and easily available. Uh, key loggers, of course, um, even ones that target mobile devices. Um, and then, uh, you know, these prices typically, you can see they range. Um, and it's typically due to what their capabilities are, how detectable they are, um, if they've been cracked before and the source is released. Um, or not, and uh, yeah, so that's that's some of the these these are from like three days ago. Yeah. So, so what we're looking at here is uh, so we've got uh, this Govrat is where you get the source code, yeah. and a code signing cert for it. You're effectively the owner of this previously unknown rat. Oh, uh, he also offers live support. And oh yeah, tech support, yeah. legit live tech support. If you're like this doesn't work, like he'll you know, and if you find a bug, he'll shoot you an update. Yeah, he'll remote into your system for you and help you with yeah. everything. <laughs> no problem. Call you on the phone. Uh, and that's about two grand. Um, but like down here, we've got this droid jack, this droid rat. Um, that's, that's out there. Like every AV out there can find it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about two bucks. But it's out there. And if you're running an old version of Android, which like 40% of the world is. Well, yeah, because a lot of the manufacturers and uh, like Verizon and stuff just aren't pushing the. Yeah, updates. there's not OTA updates. Yeah. There's like something like some insane amount of people still in like Android two. Um, this this wrecks Android two. Like this is Android two all day, and there's no like AV that runs in yep. Android two. So this just <laughs> goes. You're done, and it's two bucks. You want it? Two bucks. Have at it. So yeah, go ahead. Bank through your phone. <laughs> um. So there's also uh, readily available ransomware, banking trojans like Zeus. Uh, um, they're pricier than the rats and keyloggers. And again, the same uh, pressures on price exist, uh, how, how, if they've been cracked, how detectable they are, things like that. Um, and uh, there, there are definitely some cheap ones, like because uh, Zeus botnet, like the source is out there everywhere, even on the clear net. Yeah. Um, that's like three bucks. Zeus Atmos is really popular. Yeah, yeah you guys should recognize most of these. Uh, so where you get them? And I want to like really reinforce the live support aspect. Oh yeah, the top right one. Read that one. The, here, the uh, Stampado ransomware, uh, cheapest, only thirty nine bucks. Who here does not have thirty nine bucks for ransomware? Like it's an immediate return on your investment. Like right there, this is this is better than, than playing in the stock market. Uh, full lifetime license, updated tenth of October, patched out. Like basically, he's like regular updates, like. You're getting a full lifetime license, and what that implies is like there's regular updates coming out for this for uh, this ransomware, and you get them all for that thirty nine bucks. And so, like whenever like AV starts detecting it, whenever whatever it exploits in the operating system is patched, and he finds a way around it, you get that update. Thirty nine bucks. Yeah. So when the media says like like there's all these sophisticated Eastern European organized crime gangs that are doing all this ransomware, nah, it's like some kid. Yeah, it's some kid who took 40 bucks out of mom's purse. Um, of it's course, ben. yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no NSA. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard recently the um, Mirai Internet of Things botnet source code was uh, leaked, um, and it's readily available out there. Um, so you could pay a little more for botnets. I mean, when I say a little more, I mean just a little more. Um, and uh, these have like setup services um, and uh, support, and uh, they're non-cracked. Uh, the source isn't out there. They're not super easily detectable. Um, and they do essentially the same thing that Mirai, who had like the astronomical DDoS uh, against Craig. Craig, nobody knows doing. about this or how to detect it. Yeah. Uh, and setup services, like, you know, work when you have ProServe come in, when you buy a new product and ProServe comes in and sets you all up and gives you like a couple days of training on how to use it. That. They will set up your C2 server. They'll show you how to communicate with the botnet. They make sure it's all working to your satisfaction. $45. $70. What are you paying ProServe for that at work? 15 grand for, for, for some garbage IDS that doesn't even do what they claim? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, again, when, when the media is saying, like, uh, mm -hmm. this is, like, state actors, this has to be Russia, like, again, no, it's some kid who stole money from his parents. Yeah. Or just mowed enough lawns to get 45 <laughs> stupid dollars. Oh, these kids don't mow lawns. <laughs> they don't go outside. It's yeah, right. <laughs> Um, also, uh, if you need a very specific type of exploit, uh, even zero days, those are those are readily available as well. Um, and uh, some of them are like pretty expensive if they're a great exploit that no one else is using um, that you're going to use for a campaign or something. Um, they can be a few thousand dollars. Uh, but you can also get like <laughs> Internet Explorer exploits for like 20 bucks. Um, and a lot of businesses still have to use Internet Explorer because of their in-house intranet or portal or whatever they have, the, the arcane systems that yeah. are still in place. And, and even like, so yeah, some of like the more like serious ones are two grand, three grand, five grand. Uh, for the return on that investment you can get, if you have this money up front, that's amazingly cheap. That's ridiculous. Because whoever you know has these, two grand, is that makes them rich in their country for just the exchange rate on the U.S. dollar. Um, great way to make money. <laughs> also, if, if you have no morals, I know it's not a big Canadian <laughs> thing, but <laughs> um, that bottom one, the silent AV fucker, you <laughs> I, can have I, sex I with an antivirus. <laughs> I want to see the source <laughs> for that one. I'd love to see the source on that. <laughs> not safe for work, but I'll bite. <laughs> I'm hoping AV is antivirus, but oh no, pass. Um, and there are some other neat ones, like uh, if you don't want to deal with somebody else's computer or a botnet or anything, you could just go straight to where the money is. Uh, point of sale malware and ATM malware. Uh, right there. Ten bucks for ATM malware. And oh, I mean, no ATM still running Windows XP, right? Ten dollars. Ten dollars <laughs> for ATM malware. What in? If the ATM's running Windows XP, you think it's running AV? Any kind of endpoint protection? No, it can't. It's uh, XP embedded, it barely has the resources to run that. Next time you're in an airport, um, go up to an ATM, look behind it. Like nine times out of 10, the ethernet cable is gonna be easily played with, the power is gonna be easily <clears throat> played with. Some of them, there are even open ports right there on the back of the ATM yeah. in the airport. Yeah, you drop a land turtle on that cable, go home. <laughs> um, worst case scenario, you will be able to brute force the password on that stupid box because it's going to be a word and some numbers. Or four digits. Yeah, or four digits because it's set up by ATM installers. It's not set up by even corporations that have security standards. It's set up by the same guy that put in the soda machine. It's not, it, that, it, it's, true. it's true. That's what it is. So they're putting four-digit pins as an administrator password on the Windows XP embedded inside this ATM. You throw on a LAN turtle, you log in. For $10, you own an ATM. Oh, so Who little, here would buy an ATM yeah. for $10? <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> Thanks, RenderMan. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. So, but for more than $10. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they need to physically go down there on camera and dump the thing. Um, I, another thing to look at there is uh, 
Uh, Triton is a very, very popular ATM for bars and for uh, restaurants and stuff like that. Um, when One you downstairs. go home or after When you this, go to the lobby. Yeah. But don't go to the look lobby. Look up Triton um, administration. Um, and uh, just about all of them still have the default settings. And you just press a, button, a bunch of different keys. Uh, and look, you're in the admin panel for the ATM. That's cute. Uh, common one is the three big ones on the left. Clear, enter, something. It's the three big ones. You hit that, and then did one, two, three, four, and then you're in the password screen. Yeah, yep. it's always one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's always one, two, three, four. And then the password, <laughs> the default passwords are all ones, all twos, or all fives, depending on the tier of the account you're trying to log into. Uh, forget that, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't actually do yeah, that. Don't do that because you could just buy this. Oh, go back. <laughs> you yeah, could buy this shit for ten dollars, yeah, ten bucks. But anyway. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> also, uh, if uh, again you're playing Xbox Live and somebody <laughs> says they did something with your mother, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, uh, then you can show them who the real boss is by spamming the hell out of them or DDoSing them with the low orbit ion cannon for who, three dollars. Who knows what the loik is? Throw a hand up. Yeah. So, All right. How much does the loik cost normally? Zero dollars. <laughs> but. Uh, if you have three bucks burning a hole in your pockets, uh, he actually had a sale, by the way, <laughs> it's on sale for three bucks. <laughs> I mean, come on. Can't beat that. It's 4% off. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, again, like yeah. there's scams out there. Like don't think just because the stuff is listed on there that, uh, it's something you can't find anywhere else. Do a lot some of the tutorials. Googling. Uh, uh, are available oh, yeah. on the ClearNet for There's free. A lot oh, yeah. of uh, DDoS and botnet tutorials that are out there are being sold here for some amounts of money. But some quick Googling finds those PDFs for free. Mm -hmm. Use Google before you use dark web. <laughs> um, so going back into the realm of like physical things that you can get, um, you can even get counterfeit money like pretty easily. And not um, just money. Yeah, it's not. But, it's not just like actual currency, fiat currency. Um, but you can get things like gold, um, counterfeit gold that is, um, and then take it to the pawn shop and then have them call the police on you. Um, and currency, and then also uh, you can buy uh, the things that are required for you to make your own fake currency. Here's the holograms down here. Yeah, Et we better pick it up. Yeah. Um, other counterfeit stuff you can get, uh, the, of course, designer goods, watches, uh, stuff like that. That you, a lot of people buy these counterfeit ones to resell at a high markup uh, to people who don't know that it's counterfeit. Uh, and uh, go back. Uh, notice that they don't say that they're fake. Yeah, they're just like here's the things we're selling, and then uh, right next to them. Yeah. So anybody play Magic: The Gathering? Oh. Uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody uh, play Magic the Gathering? Uh, so you can buy uh, Power 9 uh, counterfeits. Um, so that's that's pretty terrible. Uh, those those Power 9 cards are worth thousands of dollars yeah. if they're legit. So 350 bucks for counterfeit. You got a pawn shop that isn't good at spotting counterfeit MTG cards. Um, and degrees. Uh, and the reason why this one, you can get them cheaper, but this one's 380 uh, because they use the exact paper, the exact um, gold, uh, gold overlay um, that the university itself would actually use. Yeah. So you can be so. a master's of whatever. If you're trying to get a job that has a degree requirement, 380 bucks or $80,000 student loan. Like your call. Yeah. <laughs> you end up the same person either way. You know the same amount. All right, now buying Hashtag America. counterfeit goods. You have these counterfeit goods now, so you need a counterfeit identity. Uh, so when we were talking about uh, uh, docs before, um, these in the marketplace, when they're being sold like this, are called fools, the full information. So mother's maiden name, social security number, all of that. Um, and then a lot of times when you're verifying yourself along with this identity information, you need to provide things like bank statements, utility bills, um, and you can also buy people's credit reports really cheap because uh, the uh, credit reporting agencies will just, anybody who throws money at them, they'll give information out. Uh, explain the, uh, the utility. Oh, bills, like yeah. The reason why you would need a utility bill is because um, in a lot of places around the world, the know your customer and anti-money laundering laws for setting up a financial institution based account uh, require them to 
uh, prove that this person is who they say they are, and utility bill is one of the things that they usually ask for. Yeah, like in most states in the U.S., if you want to get a license with a proper, with whatever address on it and whatever name, and uh, you one of the things they require, uh, or one of the only things they ask for, is a couple of utility bills at that address to show that, yep, you definitely live at that address. Uh, so now so, I can get an ID, you know, with a fake name and a fake address. It's a yeah. valid federal ID. Get an actual ID for sixty-two cents <laughs> times two. But yeah, or, or mean, you can actually just buy the yeah, ID. Yeah, you can just you know. yeah. Um, so uh, the driver's license that are like super legit are aren't too expensive. Um, also, uh, if you need um, IDs for a specific company, you can buy that as well. Um, passports like physical. Customized passports; those are going to be the ones that are really going to hit you in the wallet. Um, those are like three thousand on average um, for most countries. Um, I'm looking and, at Bitcoin rates right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and and so <laughs> fools is the information, and then when you have the physical documents to go with it, what that's typically called um, in the underground economies is kits, K I T Z, um, and those can run you. But I mean, these people are really good. They're like super legit. I mean, they're not legit, but. <laughs> They're legit at what they do. Um, and you can get different licenses for different states. Social security cards. I mean, here, what is it here? SSI? You guys know what social security is. SIN. SIN. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a uh, PSD template. Throw in Photoshop, do whatever. Yeah, here. you can become a vendor now. Yeah, now you can sell fake ones on here because you have the PSD template that looks real as hell. All you need is some good paper. That expensive uh, Kinko's card stock. <laughs> Okay. Also, uh, unless you've been under a rock, you probably noticed the media coverage of like all the major data breaches. Um, so uh, a lot of these, before they become public, end up for sale on underground markets. Um, for example, Yahoo uh, and the MicroTorrent forum. You know the Yahoo breach like just happened? Yeah. There it is. What's that called? Was, was this one the Dark Overlord? I think it was. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean... This is the real deal market that I was talking about before. Um, breaches show up there all the time. Yeah. And oh, yeah. And all this, all this stuff we're showing you is from one of the marketplaces we showed you 20 slides ago. Yep. A lot of it you can find through the Grams search engine. Just fire up Tor, get to work. Um, you can also buy individual accounts, uh, <laughs> Uber accounts for free Uber rides. Um, uh, there's also, uh, if you like paying for, if you like paid porn sites for some reason because you're weird, uh, you can buy that. Hey, hey. <laughs> Everyone has their kink. Well, I guess for the really specific fetishes. Some people yeah, really get I, off I mean, on paying for it. I guess that would be a kink. He does. Your hand up. Like Japan. <laughs> <laughs> no. And we need more people to be open about things like that, and I really respect that. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, we're pro sex <laughs> here. We're not going to judge. So. Um. So, uh, to go along with your fake identity, you can also get a fake shell company. Oh, I love that. Well, it's a real shell company, but uh, it's not a real company. Um, that's a great gift. That's such a satisfying So satisfying, gift. yeah. 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 Oh. Um, no, go back. So, yeah, you want to watch it a little more? <laughs> One more. <Okay. laughs> so, this is a, uh, a Russian market, um, and here they've got a bunch of uh, web companies that they've actually hacked, and they're selling you the company itself. Uh, along with this, all the information. This is an entire company. Like you will get everything you need to prove yep. that you are the sole owner of this corporation. And when I say hacked, they didn't just hack the company. They hacked uh, into the um, system where the company is registered to make you then once you purchase it, uh, the owner of that company in the yeah. registration system. This isn't like you get a bunch of paperwork and then you have to go down to a bunch of places and get a lawyer, and write a bunch of letters to like say, hey, someone stole my company. No, you're done. They just put your name in the company field. Actually, you know what? Given this is .ru, yeah. I doubt they actually did any hacking. They probably just paid somebody. Oh, right. The like, hey, man, <laughs> Ben Brown needs to own this. But you can also buy business bank accounts, business PayPal accounts uh, that have been aged. And they're, uh, you know, and, and the reason why you want to age which is so it doesn't flag. Yeah. yeah. yeah anyway. um, so we're going to go a little dark, dark. Uh, how you buy people. Yeah. People. Uh, it's true. It's yeah. real. Unlike Hitman, you can buy people on the dark web. Um, Which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> more ridiculous than that is uh, you don't have to go to the dark web. Can I read this? Yeah, you have to read this. You just go to Craigslist or Backpage and there's human trafficking <laughs> all over the place. 
This is the best Craigslist ad I've ever seen. She's she's being so subtle. So this is this is someone who this is human trafficking, and this is a like it's a terrifying fucking thing that's happening. This is a person who's being forced into the sex into sex slavery, and this is her pimp posting things on Craigslist. Um, the what's hilarious is the lack of subtlety in letting you definitely know that this is an underage girl that you're paying for, and it goes something like need a baby sitter baby hyphen sitter baby space comma sitter i'm your girl i'll love your kids and inspire true passion in them for me i'll be there for families adjusting to a recent separation not just for the kids for you you're a really nice man <laughs> i really think so and I'll tell your batshit crazy wife I think so too. Interests include older men, which is most anybody, amateur photography, <laughs> available after school and weekend. This is a child that you're paying for. And this is out there. And it, this is Craigslist. Um, and on the uh, on the right hand side, those are like um, one time purchases for like uh, uh, services, and you can you know uh, go back again and again. Uh, but the thing that's really really terrible about this one that Johnny just read is um, this is essentially a mail order bride. Um, this is for some for an old man to like buy a young child as his stay in wife. Yeah, it's nanny, it's yeah. nanny. Um. Yeah, I appreciate that nobody's laughing because, like, the 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 grammar is funny, but it's horrifying. That's a real thing that's happening, and it's right there on Craigslist. Yeah, sorry, I'm upset. You, sh you should be. Um, so yeah, things got really heavy there. Uh, sorry, sorry, guys. Anyway, uh, well. <laughs> let's lighten the mood by laughing at uh, criminals uh, getting scammed by other criminals. Also, worst friend on earth. And I like how he's filming it while he's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> like, notice the guy in white also has a cell phone. <laughs> Boot. And that cheetah is on a very long leash. I like <laughs> and how is he's, cornered standing, and terrified. he's standing behind the box like that's going to protect him. Yeah, that him box is what was there. <laughs> it's a cheetah box. You can buy those on the dark web. <laughs> is there a market for that? I gotta, I gotta get on that. Cheetah box? You don't know yeah. cheetah box? Bro. <laughs> um... Okay, so uh, is the name of the scammer here, um, and uh, this is a scam complaint, uh, tra tra um, but uh, FE means uh, finalized early, so what that means is this idiot um, released the funds from escrow before he actually got his goods, um, so, and he's complaining about being scammed for that. Sounds like a you problem. Yeah. So uh, he, this one's great, because uh, not only did he pay to buy this through the dark web, um, but, uh, the vendor said he had issues and asked him to meet in person in the same town. He says, I went to agreed time and place and he was a no-show. What a crazy coincidence <laughs> that the vendor you picked would live in the same town as you. Yeah. Like, how awesome is that? <laughs> wow. Yeah. But no. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Order the free meth sample <laughs> etc with ten dollar uh, shipping i won't read the whole thing but uh yeah i mean that's that's all we need to say about that yeah <laughs> the motherfucker stole me 800 euro yeah good so this what, guy goes into the backstory what's of going on here is he <laughs> explains that he was attempting to pull a scam on somebody else <laughs> and then somebody scammed him Twice. And he is twice. <laughs> the same guy scammed him twice. And he is furious at this guy who scammed him because I'm just trying to scam some guy and this guy's scamming me. <laughs> this is super common. <laughs> Most of the criminals of the dark web are idiots. Yeah. So, and it's not just like the things that they're selling that should be like a red flag of it might be a scam. <laughs> the names of the people selling these should be red flags. Making easy money for you. Christ one, two, three. Why are you invoking the Christian <laughs> savior in your dark net selling? I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, like fraud that. resource, discount depot, fast and safe. If you have to say fast and safe in yeah. your vendor name. 100% stealth. <laughs> 
Also, does anybody here speak Russian? Uh, Russian? Yeah, yeah. Migbliat. Migbliat. <laughs> That's pretty much like big bitch. <laughs> I don't want to buy nothing from big bitch. And my <laughs> absolute loop favorite of all time. Escro Escobar. <laughs> Escro Escobar. Like that guy's probably gonna run off with your money. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip. He's telling you right out of the gate. Um so uh it's really not all illegal stuff. Uh, surprisingly, actually, uh, there was a recent study released by the dark web data intelligence firm uh, Terbium Labs. Um, they run Matchlight. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Uh, but they uh, took a sampling of 400, uh, which for the uh, Tor network is a pretty good size sample um, of dark web sites. Um, and uh, it, they found that 53.4% um, of all domains were legal content. Um, and 54.5% of all the URLs were pertaining to legal content. So when the media tells you it's all like 90% kitty porn and guns and drugs, uh, horseshit. Yeah, where's kitty porn on here? It's, uh, uh, it's going to fall explicit. under like explicit, explicit yeah. so 3% over on this guy. It doesn't even, like other illicit activity. 6.8, yeah. Oh, yeah, 6.8, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, like an incredibly tiny amount of it is like, Revenge porn, kitty porn, etc. The vast majority of it is just legal stuff. Yeah. Uh, cool. Facebook has a dark website. Facebook has a dark website. Yep. You can use Facebook on dark web. Use Tor, use Signal, use Signal, use Tor. Lawyer Get up. on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, there's a lot of EU businesses that uh, have sites um, for regular business, like uh, scan and print shops, things like that. Um, not just the Pirate Party, but other Scandinavian political parties also have... Uh, their uh, political party sites yeah. on the dark net. But probably because the pirate party yeah, did it and made such a big deal out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, A lot of personal blogs, um, a lot of crazy ranting personal blogs. A um, lot of conspiracy theorist yeah, blogs. Yeah. yeah. Um, discussion forums, uh, anything from science and technology to gaming, a lot of gaming ones, yeah. cooking, religion. And there was even a special discussion forum on the dark web, specifically for erectile dysfunction. A whole forum. Yeah. And we're talking about that, like, how many sections can a forum on ED have? Like, like Viagra, two? not like Viagra. drugs, and then not drugs. <laughs> like, <laughs> you tell me, buddy. <laughs> mm. Other not illegal stuff you can buy. Uh, and these are not uh, code words. These are not innuendos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, there were people who posted negative reviews on the pure sand because they received like, one pound of sand. It's actually sand. Fuck you. They're like, <laughs> asshole sent me sand. What a dick. <laughs> Was supposed to be cocaine. He's like, I told you. Here, read the description. Description. Like from the motherfucking beach. <laughs> um... Oh, I thought there was one about being like uncut. <laughs> uncut. Completely uncut pure sand. <laughs> he didn't step on it. There's no baby powder in that sand. 50 USD! <laughs> or a brick. But they uh, always ship to Europe. But the brick you can only get in Europe because of yep. NAFTA or uh, trade brick. <laughs> I don't know. But why? <laughs> also this. Also shout out to this. Yeah. Um, so why, like, why are people selling this crap? Uh, there are a lot of people who are privacy advocates um, who really, uh, not only privacy advocates, but uh, technology advocates that want to start using these technologies for just everyday <laughs> basic stuff. Um, and so their, their way of uh, promoting that or putting into that is by selling stuff like sand and bricks. Finally. We're almost done. Yeah, this is like next to last. Uh, <laughs> Gerald dicking around on the dark web. Uh, so there's a lot of like free fun stuff you don't actually have to pay for or buy. Um, there's a lot of dumps for like old text files, which that's a lot of fun. Um, PDFs of like uh, um, military manuals or CIA manuals, things like that. Um, a lot of Freedom of Information Act request dumps uh, where people have just gone and like hit every agency and said, give me this information and that information. Unfortunately, a lot of those, like it's just pages of black lines, but... Um, there's a lot of creepy, like riddle puzzle sites, uh, that people have made, uh, where, uh, if you solve one part of the puzzle, then you get to the next sub domain and, you know, keep going further. Yeah, the and website further. itself is a weird puzzle. Yeah. Like, like a creepy, creepy CTF. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, lots of image boards. Uh, don't go to most of them. Like 8chan. Don't ever go to 8chan. No. Um, uh, you'll be arrested. Yeah. Just visiting yeah. the site, you're done. <laughs> um, um, there's porn. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely porn. Uh, there's, uh, there's different porn. There is uh, also other porn we have found. There's entire Rule 34 sites. Yeah. And then uh, the go directly to pound you in the ass federal prison porn. Uh, it's definitely out there. Yeah, that 4.6% of the pie we showed earlier. Yeah. 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 So, like, if this is your thing, like, if this is what you're looking for, dark web all day. Also prison. Also prison. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, I'm Johnny Christmas, Benjamin I'm ben. Brown. Uh, these are the best ways to get a hold of us. Uh, I'm I'm kind of nuts on Twitter. Uh, I guess he's nuts on Gmail. I, whatever. Uh, please tweet at us. I uh, I had scheduled these slides to go out at two thirty, so they should be out now on my Twitter account. If you go follow me, you'll see it. Uh, and thank you all for coming. I hope you had a good time.